This never works out. Taking bees out of a tree has never worked out for me. What's up everybody, David Burns here. Thanks for watching. How to get bees out of a tree? I get that call so much. We get so many emails and so many phone calls from municipalities, from homeowners that are struggling with honeybees in a tree on their property. Let me tell you a story. It's a very common story, happens a lot. My staff got an email that says, I just purchased a house and we have a beehive. I was wondering if you or anyone you know could come and safely remove the hive as I have a toddler and don't want to share the yard with the bees, but obviously don't want to kill them. Is there any charge for this? And if so, could you please let me know? Thanks in advance. We get a ton of these types of emails. Bees in their house, bees in a tree. You know, it just goes on and on. So I emailed this person and I said, what does it mean when you say you have a beehive? You know, I just purchased a house and we have a beehive. All I pictured was they bought a piece of property with the house and the last owner had a nice white Langstroth beehive in the back of the yard or something. So I inquired a little bit more by responding, well, tell me more. What do you mean when you have a beehive? Is it in a, a house, a bee house, like a, a beehive, a white box, or is it in a tree? Is it in another building on your property? They responded back and said, the bees are in a tree. And I was like, oh no, bees in a tree, not that one. <laughs> so let me tell you that I have removed a ton of bee colonies from structures, houses, commercial buildings, tractors, barns, car, you just name it, I've taken bees out of it. For a few years, I spent my whole spring, summer, and then sometimes into the fall, even did a few in the winter, removing bees from homes or buildings, or even, yes, trees. Now, I got a lot of calls when I was doing this sort of work from people that had bees in a tree, and they wanted the bees out. Because maybe the tree, in, in many cases, uh, for, I can remember one, that bees were in a tree on a golf course. And one of the golfers, a member of the club there, got stung by the bees that were in the tree and almost died, and so now the uh, golf club is like, hey, whatever it takes, we have to get these bees off the golf course. Here's a problem with removing bees from a tree. The tree is the bee's natural habitat. And I may not be 100% accurate with this, but if my memory serves me right, there are some areas, some states, maybe counties, that have strict laws about what you do to bees in their natural habitat. I think in some states they are protected and you could get in trouble by killing bees in a tree. Now obviously if it's your house and it's your tree you have a lot more uh, reason to deal with that than if you are a beekeeper trying to help a neighbor out by removing bees from their uh, tree. So let me just get into that a little bit. Can you remove bees from a tree? And if so, what is a way to do it? A few years ago, my team worked really hard removing bees from homes, and we did our fair share of trees. We would get calls from municipalities that own trees near sidewalks or downtown that had bees in it, and they just couldn't allow that. They had to, let, they had to get the bees out of there. So they would call us to remove the bees. Do we have a secret way to remove bees from a tree? Is there, is there a certain way to do it? There's a lot of people that claim to have ways to remove bees from trees. And I'm here to tell you today, there's no good way to do it. And I don't really think there's a real successful way to do it. I've tried many, many times and many, many ways to do it. Let me go over some of the ways that people oftentimes say that you can remove bees from a tree. Here's an obvious one that I've heard a lot that you can just take a beehive and attach it to the tree near their entrance so the bees in the tree coming out of a, like a knot hole or something, they've got to pass through your hive that you have there now in order to get out through the hive entrance. And there are people that claim to do that. I remember one time somebody had bees in their home 
And I told them what we had to do is remove the physical comb and the colony from the structure. And uh, that's the only way to get the bees out of there. Well, they said no. They heard that you could put a hive uh, in front of their house, like next to the hole, and make bees walk through the hive and the bees would come out. And I said, I insisted, no, that won't work. And they insisted, said, they, they were insistent and said, please, would you try that? And so I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it, you know, because, okay, I need to prove myself correct, right? So I took a hive there, fastened it, made a hole in it so the bees could pass through the hive. And I left it there for about a month. Didn't change a thing. <laughs> the thing to remember when you have a colony inside of anything, there's a queen in there. One queen. And this queen is laying lots of eggs. In the height of the bee season, this queen is laying around 2,000 eggs a day. And that's producing a lot and a lot of population. They keep growing and getting bigger. Now, this queen, let's call her Mama. Mama ain't leaving the house. She's in there laying eggs. That's her job. And what about all the nurse bees? Their job is to take care of all the young developing larvae, keep the pupae warm. It's just not going to happen. Now, another way that people tell me that they get bees out of a tree, I've heard this a lot. I've even been to conferences where people have given talks on how to do this. You take a screen and you kind of make a funnel out of it. Large at one end where you fasten it to the tree where it comes to a narrow point where the bees can barely get out of it. So what happens is when the foragers in the tree go out to forage and they go through this large screen down through a little hole, when the foragers come back, they can't fly in that little hole because they see the bigger hole and they smell the pheromones coming out of the bigger hole, but it's protected by a screen, sort of like a robber screen. And so the bees can't go in that little tiny hole anymore. Easy to go out but they can't come in. And so what you have is a collection of returning foragers all gathered at the entrance and many people feel, aha, look at all the bees, we did it. No, you didn't. You only got about 30 to 40% of the foraging force for that day. <laughs> all the other bees like nurse bees and transportation bees, all the housekeeping bees are inside of that colony taking care of this huge, huge, 40 to 60,000 population of a colony inside that tree. You've just collected some foragers. Now let's say you're successful. Let's say that over a period of a week, all the foragers happen to go out and they can't get back in. And so now you have this large group of foragers that you have now on the outside of the tree. Guess what you're doing? If you use a bee vac and you vacuum them all up and you don't see any more bees flying out, and you think, okay, we got the bees out of there. No, you didn't. You still have a lot of bees in there. Think about it. There's a lot of bees emerging. One day the queen lays 2,000 eggs, the next day 2,000, the next day 2,000. You've got this big number of populations emerging from the brood in there. The hives continue to get big because the queen's in there laying eggs. They can live a long time on their stored honey and the queen laying in there until they run out of resources because no foragers are bringing it back in. It's sad to say when you do that, when you try to capture a colony out of a tree by putting one of those screens on the front and get, getting the bees to come out through it, you're actually starving out and killing the colony. What will eventually happen without incoming uh, resources from those foragers that can't make it in anymore, the hive will eventually perish from a lack of food. You're gonna starve out the hive. It's just impossible to believe that the queen would ever abandon the comb, abandon the hive, and walk out through that screen. Other than swarming, the queen never leaves the hive. So when people called us and asked us to you know, remove bees from a tree, they think we're just going to come there, reach in with our hand, and scoop up a handful of bees and the queen and walk away with 20 bees and all the problems are over. They don't realize there's 40 to 60 to 80,000 bees in that tree with a lot of comb in a hollow spot in that tree. Some of you watching this video that are beekeepers, probably will tell me that you've had success in smoking the bees out of a tree. I don't doubt that that may be a possibility in the right scenarios, 
But I'll assure you, I've tried that many, many times. I've even used things like butyric acid, which is known as bee robber, a way that we get bees off of supers to harvest the honey out. I've put uh, butyric acid, uh, you know, fumes, trying to get the, the queen to come out. She's, she just won't leave. I've tried it on my own hive in experimenting how to get bees out of a tree, seeing if I could smoke all the bees out of a hive. They just won't all leave. You can't do it. Now, if you've had success, there's no need for you to leave a comment below and go into great details about how you've removed bees from a tree by smoking them or using a screen or you putting a hive in front of it. I'm sure there are rare circumstances where something was just right and that worked. But after spending years and years and years of trying all those things and nothing worked, I've concluded and that's what we practice. The only way to remove bees from a tree is to cut the tree down. Now, a lot of people think as beekeepers, we can show up with a chainsaw and we ourselves can just cut open the tree, take the beehive out, put the tree back together. <laughs> well, that's not gonna work. Another thing to consider is, as far as I know, it's illegal for me to take a chainsaw to somebody else's tree. When we were doing it, we made sure that the homeowner or the company or the municipality would contract with an arborist who has a license to work on trees and they would hire that person to open up the tree or to completely saw it down and we would surgically and very carefully remove the hive from the tree as the he or she would continue to cut that tree down far enough where we could get to the bees. That was the only way that we could figure out how to remove bees uh, from a tree. We would have to take the whole tree. The reason why it's important to have a licensed arborist do it is because they know and they are trained on cutting trees. Like they may, if the bees are in a certain branch, then you can take that branch. But an arborist knows what happens to the tree if you cut that branch the balance of the tree. And I thought that was really important. I learned a lot by working with my arborist for, for many years on removing bees from trees. Uh, he taught me a lot about why he had to do certain things to keep the tree balanced. So if you as a beekeeper show up at somebody else's house and you go cutting branches and limbs off, you could upset the balance of that tree and it could fall on their house and they might come back and actually sue you. So you have to be careful when you go cutting on trees, not to mention the fact that tree limbs are large, heavy, and very dangerous. So unless you're a trained tree cutter, you might wind up in a mess cutting on a tree. So we would always tell people, you have two options. You have the option of living with your bees. You have the option of us cutting the tree completely down. And, and removing the bees from the fallen tree. In many cases, the tree had to come down for safety reasons because maybe the bees were too close to a schoolyard, a sidewalk, downtown area, and it was endangering the people that may have uh, allergic reaction to honeybees. So we just had to remove those bees by taking the tree down. I remember a similar situation happened in a nearby city near me, and a lot of beekeepers in a certain neighborhood started calling me saying their bees were dying from pesticides. Now it's unusual in town, uh, in, in farm related applications, you, you might expect that occasionally, but this is in a city and they were all reporting it in, a, in a, probably a one mile area. And I started putting things together and I started working with the beekeepers that were reporting it and getting more information. I found out that a local park district had cut down a tree in that tree, either in the tree or on a limb, was a beehive. That park district called in a pest control company who then sprayed and killed the bees in the tree that they had cut down. Now, what happened was, over a period of a few days, after all the bees were killed by the pest control company, area beekeepers noticed that their bees were flying out and coming back with pesticide poisoning. Now, their bees were going to this big tree that had been cut down and all the bees were killed, but the honey was still there, laced with this toxic pesticide. The bees didn't know it, 
So area beekeepers bees were flying to the fallen trees sprayed with pesticides and gathering up this honey from this fallen tree where the bees were all dead now and they were taking this toxic honey back to their hive. Some of them making it back to their hive probably feeding the honey to their young to other bees and beehives were dying. Well eventually it was found out which pest control company did this and they learned their lesson and vowed never to do that again. There's better ways to, to remedy problems with bees and trees than this kill them. So if you're a homeowner and you decide to put some sort of poison inside your tree uh, to kill the hive in there, what you may be doing is opening yourself up for additional lawsuits from area beekeepers suing you because you, in a sense, poison their bees. This is a tough scenario to be in. When you have a tree and you have bees that are in that tree that may be threatening people walking by on a sidewalk, a schoolyard, or your toddler. This is a tough call. I think the only humane thing to do is actually cut the tree in such a way where you can move it with the bees still intact to a beehive, a bee yard somewhere and let those bees live out happily ever after and then you don't have the bees in, on your property. I don't think it's a good idea. I can't bring myself to accept killing bees in a tree. I know many people tell me I need to get over that, that there are safety issues, that it's better to kill those bees in a tree, but I just can't bring myself to do it. The people who do promote killing bees in trees like that, the way that they do it so that other bees don't go in there and get a hold of that toxic honey with pesticide in it after the colony has been sprayed and killed, is that they screen over the opening. So no bees come out and no bees go in to get that honey out of the tree. And I understand that would be a safe way to keep other colonies in nearby area from going in there. But boy, I just could not bring myself to kill a hive in their natural habitat of a tree. Now, I guess if I saw that the bees were stinging people and that people were being threatened by anaphylactic shock, you know, somebody almost died or did die, by all means, we just have to decide, wow, we, we've got to uh, protect people. I mean, there comes a point where there's a remedy. But I, I tell you, the best remedy is removing that tree not, you know, getting it away from the people, but not killing the hive. Now, let me tell you how we would do it. We would go there the night before. I would actually go there with two other of my workers. We would go there with scaffolding, if it was tall, or, or lifts, and I would have staple guns and screen. We would go there at night, and we would staple every single opening that we thought the bees could come out of. We would staple the bees inside the tree at night. And that really worked out well. The next day when we showed up, our arborist would look it over and then he would start cutting the tree down from the top until he got close to where the bees were if they were in this lower part of the trunk. And he would tell when we would get close to the soft part of the tree where maybe that big cavity was. And he would say, okay, I'm there without breaking open the cavity and letting the bees out, he would then go to the very bottom of the tree and we would be ready with my team of beekeepers that as he cut the bottom, he would get down into maybe hard wood again. And so then we would just take this whole lower part of the trunk to our bee yard. And it worked out really nice. So those of you that are suffering with bees in your tree, maybe you can see if you can live with them. Sometimes they're not a problem, you just notice it. Maybe they're high up, they're not a threat to you, and you're okay with letting them be. The truth of the matter is, unfortunately, there are many colonies that are gonna die within a year or two in that tree anyway. Bees have a lot of problems. In the wild, they're called feral colonies, feral bees, and they have the same problems as the bees that we have in our hives do, mites, diseases, pests. So it's a chance when the beekeeper is not assisting those bees in a tree, that they're probably not going to make it through too many winters, too many virus levels from mites, and they're going to perish. But if you absolutely have to get rid of them, then you need to talk to a beekeeper who is going to work with a licensed arborist, help you remove that tree with the bees in it to an apiary where the bees can live happily ever after 
and so can you. If you're a beekeeper and you want to get more bees, you want to have more colonies on your property, and so you think one of the ways to do it is to go cut out bees from homes and houses and trees, more power to you. We do need really expert beekeepers to do that. When I did it, what the, the best way that I saw to, to make it work good for me is I would actually work in part I would actually work in partnership with a contractor, an actual house builder contractor. So the homeowner would contract with him and contract with me separately. So he would go in and open up the house in a bee suit. He knew all the special woodworking and aluminum siding or, you know, vinyl siding, cedar siding. He was wonderful. He would go in there and open. He, I would tell him where the bees were after I searched it out. And then he would go in and open up the home, either from the inside drywall or the outside, the siding or the roof or whatever. So as soon as he opened up the area a little bit, I was there with our specially made bee vac that doesn't kill bees. And I would begin vacuuming the bees off of the comb, both sides of the comb, while looking for the queen. Once we found the queen, we would put her in her own special cage. And then we knew that it would be easy to get the rest of the bees, continuing to vacuum them, suck them off of the comb with our bee vac. Once we got all the comb out, the bees out, then we would stuff that opening. We cleaned it out. And once it was clean, we would put bat insulation and then he would reassemble the house, the home, either the drywall or the outside siding, caulk everything really nice. So no future bees from additional swarming could ever come back to that location. That works out really well. So if this is something you're thinking about doing as a beekeeper uh, to expand the number of colonies that you have, you can certainly do that. It is a lot of work and you need to be professional as you can and follow all the laws in doing this. And if you're a homeowner, I hope this has been helpful for you to understand how to respect the precious pollinator, the honeybee, while at the same time understanding that you do have to make sure that no one is in harm's way while playing outdoors or walking around the tree with bees in it. So I know that you can use your wisdom to negotiate uh, best interest for both parties. Beekeeping is so interesting. Sometimes people have us remove bees from their home or a tree and they want it to be on their property. They want us to put the bees in a hive and put it in their backyard uh, because they understand how awesome beekeeping is. And if you are interested in beekeeping, we have many online beekeeping courses coming up on Black Friday. It's not far away. So keep in mind, we have these courses. We have basic beginning beekeeping. This is good if you know nothing about beekeeping and you just want to start. It talks about equipment, how to install packages. It talks about management. It gives uh, kind of an introductory uh, course of bee anatomy, colony anatomy, uh, how to work your bees, how to keep adding boxes as the hive begins to grow and when to take honey supers. I mean, just a lot of information there for basic beginning beekeeping. We also have other online courses. Some of you are beekeepers right now. We have a course that will be beneficial to you, maybe still this year. It's called Getting Your Bees Through the Winter. Talks about how to prepare your bees to have the best case scenario of making it through the winter. Also, we have one about spring management, and that's really a good one. People love that. Talks about how to either uh, control swarming, how to make splits in the spring, maybe split your hive before it swarms, what to do with honey in the spring. It's a really good course for spring management. Then for those of you that are tired of buying your own queens everywhere and uh, dealing with queen losses, why not learn how to raise your own queens? I have a whole online queen rearing course that will teach you the art of raising queens, grafting, and it is such fun to raise your own queens. And you save a ton of money. Oh my gosh. Right now, the price of buying a queen and having it shipped to your door overnight is around 70 or 80 bucks. So every queen that you can make can save you 70, 80 bucks. You can also help out your local bee club if you do start making queens. Maybe some of your fellow beekeepers will want to buy some of your queens. You can make a little money on the side. 
check out our queen rearing course. It's available half price on Black Friday. For those of you that just want to play in hives with me, I have a, a course called A Day in the Apiary with David. I took a bunch of people, a bunch of beekeepers one day, through various things in the hives, and I had a friend film the day. And this is really good if you want to experience being with me and hearing me teach these uh, fellow beekeepers different things that I'm seeing and having them experience things like moving a hive or inspecting a hive, doing a mite test, taking honey off the hive. I mean, it's actually hands-on right there out in the bee yard. It's called a day in the apiary. 50% off, that's a fun course as well. Those of you that want to really dive deeper, I have a course entitled Advanced Beekeeping, and this deals more with pests and diseases, drills a little deeper down into your basic uh, beekeeping operations, and talks more advanced about different techniques, but primarily focusing on what to do when you have or how to identify pests and diseases. And finally, a course that so many people ask me about if I have one, and yes, I've had this available for years. It's a mite control course. A lot of you ask me, David, what do you do to prevent mites? What do you do to cut mites down? You know, what's your approach? Do you use chemicals? Do you, do you use other things other than chemicals? You need to understand, I have a whole course on mite control. It's going to be 50% off on Black Friday. So please check that out. Now, I know Black Friday at the publishing of this video is still a few days out. Some of you may want to go ahead and order your online courses now and not wait for Black Friday and pay the full price. And if you're doing that, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. It helps me out a little bit on uh, finances. But by all means, we are being generous and offering them at half price on Black Friday on 2021. So I hope that's helpful. You know, during the pandemic, when it started in 2020, we realized that beekeeping courses, uh, classes were canceled. Ours were on-site courses. And we already had our online classes available for a couple of years prior to that. And so we, we chose to mark down our beekeeping classes online 50% because we realized that many beekeepers were kind of caught in the middle of not being able to go and either meet with their mentors or meet with their bee clubs or take classes. Some of you still may not want to do that. And these online courses are great. Let me tell you about them. These online courses, they are yours to keep as long as you want. They're videos of me teaching. And these videos are links. You'll get, uh, once you purchase them, you'll get an email with a PDF file with the links that you click on and watch the videos of me teaching whenever you want to. You can pause it, you, can, you don't have any time limit. If you wanna take a year to get through a course, it's yours to watch forever. You're not watching a Zoom class, you're not watching a Zoom meeting, you don't have any deadline to meet. This is just you and me learning about bees, <laughs> me teaching you. So it's designed to meet your schedule. Some of you really have enjoyed filling out the student sheet and sending those back in for my staff to grade. You have to send the actual worksheet by US mail to us. And once you send that back to us, um, they'll, my staff will grade it and then you will be issued a certificate of completion. A lot of people have done this. So if that's something that's important for you, then certainly that's something you can pursue. Some municipalities require that you take a beekeeping course before you keep bees in the city. And uh, our courses qualify for that in most places. So be sure and check that out as well. You may need a certificate to prove that you are a beekeeper that has taken a course. So all that's coming available on Black Friday in a few days. So keep your finger next to your computer to click on the mouse and order those courses as soon as you can. I really think it's important to have more and more subscribers because I really enjoy interacting with you. And once you subscribe, I know you're committed to the channel to keep watching my videos. If you click on the bell, then you'll be notified each time I make a new video. And I love that feature. I subscribe to several YouTube channels other than beekeeping. And I enjoy being notified when I know that that content creator has published a new video because I'm anxiously awaiting to watch what new things they're talking about. Just subscribe, click on the bell, and that will take place for you. There's no cost for subscribing, by the way. 
Also, give a thumbs up. As many of you as possible, giving a thumbs up will help YouTube recognize this video as valuable and they may push it more and give more views to those interested in beekeeping. So you're helping out other people that are interested in beekeeping by giving me a thumbs up. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Hope this has been helpful. I'll see you next time.